we're hearing more and more people talking about a bio-eco-developmental model. Let me kind of um, unpackage that a little bit for you. Um, this is a, a, a kind of a, a recent version of the old nature versus nurture debate, um, which was very, a very hot debate in scientific circles until the turn of the century. In 21st century science, that's not a debate anymore. It's not either or, it's always both. So um, the, the bio part of the bio-eco-developmental model is kind of more this notion that um, you know, we inherit certain predispositions in our genes and that genetics has a lot to do with ultimate outcomes, whether you can get health problems, how well you're gonna learn. Um, the eco part of this model is the environment, um, which is the, the, the part of the discussion that says, you know, our, our life outcomes are not fixed, they're not chiseled in stone, that they're very much influenced by the environment in which we live, the ecology, our experiences, our relationships, uh, influences um, that act upon us. And a bio-eco developmental model says if we really want to understand development um, from a learning point of view, a behavior point of view, or a health point of view, we have to understand that it's neither primarily genetic nor primarily the environment, that the two are highly interrelated and they affect each other. So each of us is born with a unique genetic potential, but that doesn't determine, that, that just kind of sets a broad range of possibilities. How we end up health-wise, learning-wise, behavior-wise, depends upon how our experiences affect the expression of our genes. So the bioeco-developmental model says if we really want to understand um, both the origins of health and illness and learning and behavior, or if we want to understand why some people get problems and other people don't, we have to simultaneously look at individual differences and in how we're each wired up and the environments and experiences that we're exposed to and how those affect each other. But just to give you a very specific example, um, we know that there are some forms of cancer that tend to run in families. They have a strong genetic component, but not everybody in the family gets that cancer. And we know that there are some cancers that are related to uh, toxic chemicals in the environment. Uh, epidemiologists will find there's a very high rate of a certain kind of cancer in a particular community. And so we look for what is it in the environment that's causing that higher rate of that particular cancer. But not everybody in that community gets that cancer. So um, the, the explanation for both is that Genetics makes us more or less sensitive to the environment. Environments pose more or less um, influences on who we are and how we develop. And the end product is the two. So you can't separate them anymore. Nature versus nurture um, is a 20, 20th century scientific concept. The Human Genome Project and all the science around it ended that kind of debate. We now know that um, if you're ever given a test on anything related to development or health or behavior and, the, and you get a, a multiple choice question, you say, is this due to genetics? Is this due to the environment? Is it due to neither? Or is it due to both? The correct answer is always D. It's due to both, always. Sometimes there's more influence of one on the other, but it's always the interaction between the two.